Hey everyone, my name is Perry, I'm an electrical engineer and in this video I'm going to talk about the different fields of engineering that you can major in while in college and this is going to give you guys a better idea of what to choose if you're on the fence about it. Also at the end of this video I'm going to talk about some college hacks that I wish I knew before starting engineering because these might help you guys out on your journey. Mechanical engineering focuses on pressure, flow rates, gears, and temperature. Almost everything mechanical engineers work on is something you can touch or see with the naked eye. For that reason, this is the most common field of engineering because it's the field best suited for visualizing and physically looking at what you're working on. The other thing about mechanical engineering is whatever you're working with, it's probably moving. Something is almost always in motion. With electrical engineering, you can separate this into two big categories, analog or digital. Analog circuits are the stuff that you can physically hold and look at, like resistors, capacitors, inductors, batteries, op amps. If you like stuff like that, hardware is probably more of your focus. Digital circuits use logic gates, which have statements like and, or, nor, if, then. You can also delve into binary numbers and hexadecimal notation if you want to work with microcontrollers and microprocessors. And that's more the software engineering side. There are other parts of electrical engineering too, like control systems and electromagnetism, where you can build radios and communication systems. Software engineering and computer science. You'll be working all day, every day with digital circuits, data, and algorithms. This is the hardcore programming using Java, C++, Python, and other programming languages. And all these programming languages are not that different from each other. Once you learn like two or three, the rest are pretty easy to pick up. Chemical engineering. There's almost no chemistry. This is all flow rate analysis and thermodynamics. You'll be working with polymers and enzymes and all the biotechnology stuff. The chemistry and chemical engineering comes when you're doing your masters or PhD because that's when you begin mixing chemicals and synthesizing new substances. Biomedical engineering. You'll be focusing on x-rays, MRIs, ultrasounds, like more acoustics imaging technology. You're combining medicine and engineering to use in hospitals and in general healthcare. Civil engineering. Building bridges and roads and everything is static, which means what you're working on usually has nothing in motion. If you want to be a civil engineer, you need a PE or a professional engineering certification so you can sign off on blueprints and be design responsible. This is the only field of engineering I know of that requires extra certification outside of just a degree. Aerospace engineering. As you probably guessed it, you're building planes and space shuttles. Environmental engineering. This is a field of engineering where you don't know a lot about anything, but you know a little bit about everything. These people combine all their unique backgrounds and ask, how do we get rid of pollution? How do we recycle more? Alternative forms of energy. Obviously, I didn't get to every single field of engineering, but these are the most common ones, so if you really don't know where you want to go, I hope this video helped you a little bit in your focus. Now to the engineering college hacks. The question I get asked most often is, does college actually matter? And the short answer is, yes, it does matter. These engineering fields, like, like anything else, you can learn by yourself, but it's far less credible than if you actually have a degree. The value of an engineering degree is not in how much math you can do. When you have a degree in engineering, what that shows your employer is that you have the capacity to solve complex problems and stick with a project long term. On the actual job, you will not be solving integrals. You're not going to be doing like Calc 3 or Calc 4, that stuff that they teach you in college. A lot of that is so that they can teach you far more than you'll actually use. That way when you get to your real job, it's like, okay, I already know this because I've worked on it way back when. This is more of a review and refresher so you can learn deeper about whatever focused job you have. If you're working in the automotive industry, right, and you're trying to work on like the engine of a car, you really could care less about radios or like microprocessors and vice versa. If you're a software engineer and you're focused on like microprocessors and programming, it really doesn't matter how much knowledge you have about the automotive industry. If you go to a school like MIT, your employer or whoever's interviewing you, they don't have to work that hard to determine if you're going to be a good employee and a great fit for the company because just getting into MIT is so difficult as it is. The college already does the job of screening each of its students so your employer themselves doesn't have to like take much of a risk on you. They don't have to worry about your work ethic or if you can stick to something. Like if you're already at that school, you've already proved you're in like the top 1% of the world. That doesn't guarantee you a job, but that really puts you higher than other people because, like I said, the college does most of the screening work for the employer. Engineering and STEM professors are useless. 
they do not care if their students actually learn anything. The reason for that is not because they're heartless, it's because those professors aren't there to teach. They are at the university to conduct their research. They are required to teach a class. They don't want to be there. One of the things that got me through engineering was that I found those group of students and me and all my friends were all doing engineering. We all took the same classes together and you all studied together. That's what really gets you through it. It's not the professors teaching you the material. When it comes to engineering exams, a lot of people say that they're super hard and the curve pretty much saves you. There's a reason that these exams are as hard as they are made out to be. The engineering exams are not made to fail everybody, but they are made to especially challenge you because that's what's gonna happen on the actual job. When you ask questions that everyone's expected to know and everyone gets them all right, it's really difficult to determine which students stand out above the rest. So to counter that, the engineering and STEM professors will purposefully ask much more difficult questions than are actually like in the textbook or that they actually taught you because they want to see which students are taking the extra time to, to go deeper into the source material and really have a firm understanding of what they're doing. When it comes to getting a job, the degree is not enough. Every job that you apply to, if you say, I have a degree in engineering and here are my like achievements thus far, it doesn't matter because everyone else applying to that same job has that same degree in engineering. So if you're comparing yourself to other engineering candidates, just having a degree is not enough. That's just a base requirement. They're really asking you, what else did you do outside of doing what everyone else did? And this is where the internships and co-ops play a huge role. It gets even more competitive after that because if you have one internship, you are definitely put on a higher pedestal versus all the kids who have no internship. But now it's going to be like, okay, what did you actually do in the internship? Or do you just kind of sit around and we're on Netflix all day? All right, guys, that was my rant. I really hope it helps somebody out there decide what they want to do with their future engineering career. And if this helped anyone who's currently in college, kind of understand what you're going through. Because when I was there, I would always think, does this stuff actually matter? Like, who cares that I can find an eigenvalue, right? It's like, is this really gonna help me in life? And the answer is probably not. But it's much better that you're exposed to all of these different classes and all of these different like fields of engineering and what you can do with each of those fields. So then you get to decide, I wanna focus on this job so I can work on this project. Not everyone wants to work on the next iPhone. Some people want to do automotive. Some people want to do communications. And all these array of classes will tell you which one you want to do. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you have any more questions, put it in the comments below and I'll get to them as soon as I can. Thanks again, you guys. Stay fresh and stay golden.